Hello my friends, welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Here I have got another deer, absolutely fantastic specimen, a roe deer, shot by my game guru, Coops. Neck shot, it's absolutely immaculate. If you just have a look in there, and obviously neck shot, we've retained the heart and the liver and the lungs for further processing, but I just want to show you a very very simple method of processing your deer now I know a lot of you you've got different methods especially in the US I know I've said this many times before a lot of you just have it staked and ground but I am going to show you a simple method which you can do at home based on cutting a lamb and you will get a lot more usable cuts higher yield so, first thing we're going to do is break this down into primals. Now what we need to do is get a knife and if you look inside where there is no nice term for this, the ass end is, if you look as it count, comes up that bone, the next one, just put your knife through, get your blade and then just Cut through, and then with your butcher's saw, you really need a saw for work like this, just gently nip the legs off. Beautiful. And next, I just want to nip those breasts off. Some of you have seen me do this before, so this will only go into trim not the easiest there's not a lot of fat to help keep it stable so just take your time and then repeat to the side so just take a flap you can see to the shoulder you can use I know this sounds crazy, but tin snips would be easier, or some real sharp poultry scissors. Just cut through there. Just take your time. So that gives us our legs, our breasts. Now to cut our shoulders. Count one, two, three, four, five, six. After the sixth rib, each side, and again with our saw, and that will give us our shoulders to work with, our loin, our legs, and our breasts. And there we have our primal cuts of our deer. Now this method can be used for any deer from a tiny muntjac over here in the UK to reds up in Scotland or over in the US, you know, your cotton tails and your white tails. It will work for any deer you've got or you can get or you shoot or you hunt. Right, next we need to work on these primals one by one. So we broke our deer down into the primals as you've seen. Obviously we had our breasts, our legs, our loin. First thing we're going to work on are the shoulders. Now I've done several, several videos on deer butchery. You know there's so many different ways to do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these shoulders off whole. So by just keeping your knife close to the bone on the top of the rib cage up by the sternum just follow the bones and you'll see that's where it was shot but they will come off quite easily there's one side and the same with this side so knife in you can see the ribs 
and then if you tuck your knife round the bone, catch that eye, which is your neck fillet, a very good cut. You can see me just opening that up. It is hard to get all these angles right for the camera, so please bear with me. Bit of shot damage there. But that was pretty much your shoulders off. Obviously, you can spend your time trimming any other damage, which will go. As I've said in many of my videos into your trim pile to be sorted for sausage meat, ground meat or your diced venison. Right, once we've got our shoulders off then we want to take those front hocks off. You can see that white line there. If you put your knife in then you can see that bone there and then just gently with your knife and this is doable at home folks, you can see I just snapped through that, there's one, and this is the bit I was trying to save, you seam this neck fillet off, where there's any blood meat or damage, again, into our trim pile, we'll come back to that. But that is a prime, prime piece of meat. That would be great diced or cooked in the pan. And it's a case of just boning out these shoulders. Now I'm going to dice all this, so you know, don't worry too much about this. You're going to get plenty of meat for sausages, plenty of meat for ground, for your meatballs, your burgers, so especially for a beginner, you know, don't pan it too much. I just want to show you this one tricky bone though, the blade bone. This is so different from cutting pork or lamb, especially doing it in reverse for you guys. There's a joint here. I'm just going to go through. Just get it under this blade bone. You can see that joint is what we've snapped through. So obviously you all have yours on the block. I'm doing this to show you. Once you've got it loose, get your finger underneath it and pull. And that comes off super clean. There's your blade bone. This is the case of going and taking this bone out. Its name eludes me at the moment. It will come back to me. Keep your knife headed towards the bone all the time. There you have your shoulder. I mean, if it had a bit more fat on it, you could maybe roll that up. But I'm going to work my way through that in a moment. That goes on the pile. This little front hock, easy to bone out. Great way to learn how to bone. I'll show you. We are always only using the tip of the knife. I know it looks like I might be going deeper. Always angled towards the bone. You know, just take your time and just gently go either side. There's that little four hot boned out. So I shall repeat that with this one. Just take that neck fillet off again through its natural seam. Again, 
any of that damage. Beautiful neck fillet. And then I will repeat as with the first one. Snap through it. So here are my two shoulders boned, two neck fillets. There was a bit of shot damage because it was a neck shot. They would have been a bit longer. Two front hocks and our pile of trim. We'll come back to that a bit later on because a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you define what's trim and what's diced? And I shall use that to show you. So next we'll be getting on to the breasts. Now, not a lot on these. You could, if you want to, just go straight through there and have mini racks. But all I like to do, now as you can see, there is not a lot of fat or meat on these. Looks like a supermodel's rib cage. You can see the ribs through it. So I'm just gently sheet boning that out and that. Again, I know I sound like I'm repeating myself, but ground or sausages. And I'll tell you what, it really is harder buttering slower than my normal speed. Hey, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I mean, you could if you wanted to roll those up, cook them like that, put that again into my trim pile for us to sort at the end so I shall get on and do this one so next then it's the money shot the beautiful haunches now all we need to do you can see it's almost like someone's drawn lines for you that white line straight down with your knife I'm going to use my saw years ago we'd have just chopped through that but saw straight through that bone and at the same time continuing all the way through the tailbone and there you have your two haunches now what I always do because it's a great cut a little a bit of added value is I cut these chunks off I've said before equivalent to the rump steak so if you look where the H bone is sticking out the hip bone pointing to where the tail was and then saw through it now you're left what you would call a chum or a rump same for this one so the hip bone towards the tailbone and again and when sawing bones or meat you can hear that sawing through the bone but as soon as it stops you stop because you're going into the flesh then and then just cut that one off and we've got our two haunches now me being a butcher, I just like to trim that bit of flank off into the pile. Taking the shanks off, as you can see, just a little bit of movement in there. If you get your knife in, first time you might hit it. And it's a case of just going straight across and joining that first initial nick into the cartilage. So again, will I get it first time? Man, it's like I almost know what I'm doing. And then there, fantastic venison shanks. And we're left with these beautiful, beautiful haunches. So, need to take out that H-bone. Another odd shaped bone, not the easiest one, but just time and practice, but if you're doing this at home for the first time, do not panic. Take your time. Just gently, like I showed with just the tip of your knife, just follow. If you stick to the bone, you won't 
go far wrong. And if you do go off the line a bit, don't panic. You are not going to take a lot of meat with you. So just do that other one quickly. Now you could leave these on the bone hole. What I like to do is to break them down. As you can see, there's a seam there. Knife needs a sharpen. Might have to watch that knife sharpening video. And you'll expose the thick plank or the knuckle. And you will hit the femur, which is there. As you can see, and then tuck just underneath it. And you'll come to another natural seam. And basically, that's your knuckle off. So I'll show you that again. <clears throat> As you can see, it doesn't show up so much on this one. There's a white line. So if you get your knife in, keep mine a little sharp. Just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Right, we're back. And you go down and you will hit the femur or the thigh bone. As you can see, I've exposed in there. What you need to do is just hook under, again, just with the tip of your knife. And if you can see in there, I'm under that bone and I've hit a natural seam, which will bring that knuckle or flank away from our top side, silver side, inside round, outside round. You say tomato, I say tomato. Anyway, femur out, simple as with the shank or the hock, either side, take it out, da -da -da, give it to your dog. And there we're left with, like I said, top side, silver side together. I will square mine off. I will tie those. You will have two stunning, stunning joints, which we will do a bit later on. So to our knuckles, our thick flank, I'm gonna cut the knuckle bone off. And then basically, any trim, Anything you don't want on there, take off and then just through. And that gives you some nice venison medallions. Good enough to grace any plate. So I'm going to go for three different, uh, three decent sized ones and then. Again, hands up if you can guess where the rest is going. There's going to be a quiz after this. Yes, into the trim pile. Now we move on to those chumps or those rumps. Again, just want to get a couple of little stakes out. Just get your knife in there. Quite straightforward. Take the bone out. I take all that into the pile and again what I'm going to do I'm going to get one really decent one out of this so like that and that is the equivalent to your rump steak I'll show you that again so just trim all those vessels off there you can see the bone Let's see if I can bring that in and we're just loosening it off then don't be scared to hold the meat how you want to hold it you know don't let the meat be the boss let the meat do the moving around and you stay in one place and then again one decent sized shouldn't that steak so there's a couple of steaks then that we got out of the haunches so onto the final primal the final primal man. What a good name for a metal band. That would have to be a thrash metal band. 
live tonight, final primal. God, I've got to get out more. Anyway, so many ways you can prepare this. As some of you may or not know, especially my friends over the pond in the US, Canada. Just strip out the back strap, great in the pan. You know, a top, top cut, just pan fried, simple or rolled in some spice and pepper. Or you could uh, bone it out whole, roll it up, make some noisettes. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this straight down the middle like you would a loin of lamb. And I want to get some nice venison chops out of it. We'll also give you the option of racks of venison where you could go on to make a crown of venison. Venison. Venison, if you look down there in the comments, you'll see my crown of venison video. Also, my guard of honour when the two racks are sitting proud. Also down there, guys and gals, check it out. So what we need to do then, pretty much what I said, saw straight down the line. Now, just take your time. Let the saw do the work and keep a nice straight line. And by the miracle of camera, one, two, three, and we're back in the room. There you go then. Just take your time. Like I said, once you hear the saw stopping, stop. I should just cut through there. I should just get a rag. Just take off any of that bone dust. It's a wet, damp cloth. There we have. Take out the spinal cord. Beautiful. We are left with our split loin. So all I'm going to do, where that rib ends, the next joint in the backbone, straight through, and that gives us our loin chops and leaves us with our racks to work on. So same again, be careful at home doing that. If you want, just use your saw. That gives us again the other side. So two loin ends, two best ends. And one hell of a pile of venison flesh. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently nip, if you can see that, that backbone off by just with my can you hear that just stopping and then take that backbone off just again tracing down the bone that leaves you with that rack same with the other side so just under the bone take your time Again, get it under, just gently sheet it out. There we have our other rack, which we will work on in a bit. So we broke our carcass down into primals. We boned, trimmed, and whatever we needed to do to those primals. Now the art of the butcher really comes to the forefront it's turning this pile of venison flesh into something special so for my racks then i just want to trim them down a bit i'm using this really really old chopper given to be me by a guy i worked for he was in his 70s just an absolute genius this is by spear and jackson i mean they don't even make them like that anymore just got such a lovely weight 
All I'm going to do is trim those bones off that rack. So you could go ahead, French trim that. What I'm going to do is cut some lovely thick chops by going between every second bone and that just trim up that bit of funk because that's what we do as butchers and that gives you look at those for the barbie the grill whatever and to my american friends over the pond you know this really is a good way of doing the back strap something a bit different looks nice on the plate and then the loin ends you'll see there's a bone a joint and between each one of those knife and push down and through and that will give you your loin chops of venison. So well to that one loin then, instead of two whole back straps, we got that array of chops. Remember that knuckle we did, or that thick flank of the haunch, we got those steaks, and those two rump or chump steaks. What I'll do is I'll assemble all this after to show you what we got. Now we are going to work on our trim and our shoulders, tie up our haunches, sort out into diced or cube venison and our mince or our ground venison. We'll put it all together and I'll show you what we've achieved. So with our shoulders then, you can see you might just have to trim a few odd uh, bits up. And all we're looking for is diced or cubed and trim. Now the, the way we tell which is cubed and which is trim, pretty straightforward. I cut that bit off there and you will make a good dice out of that piece there. Next piece you might get one cube out of and another there and one there. So there's your diced or cubed. That would go into trim and it's just by eye you know if you think it will make a decent cube do it if not don't worry because you'll have plenty to play with just put it into your ground pile your mince pile which is there so after a few minutes then cubing and trimming you're left with your respective piles there's my trim there's my lovely cubed or diced venison. Let's start to have a look what we've achieved. Beautiful shanks. I love braised venison shanks. Venison, try saying that after 10 pints. Put your teeth back in. Those neck fillets. Those two rumps. Then on to the loin chops. And there are so many ways, guys and gals, you can cook this stuff. Please check out my vast back catalogue. I have got some amazing venison recipes for you to check out. Then our loin chops. And it's surprising what you can get from such a wee beastie. And there's another couple of loin chops. There's those steaks from the knuckle. Those, I suppose you call them venison scallops. There's that other rump steak. And then the venison haunch. You can tie your haunch off if you want to. But I use these food grade vans, they are brilliant and they look smart. Easy as, just start threading them on. And you can trim up each end to make it nice and uniform. And you will end up 
with something like that. Fit enough to grace any table. How good does that look? So there you are. One row deer cut up. Not bad, eh? So like I said, then if you go onto my channel and you go onto the Game On playlist, you'll see a plethora of venison videos. I've got a venison and red wine casserole with the diced. I've got some fantastic braised venison shanks. I love them done with pearl barley. On there you'll also see a neck pasta sauce, which is just absolutely stunning. I've got several venison backstrap and steak videos. There's a roast haunch. I mean, that just looks fantastic. I mean, just think what you'd pay for that in a butcher's. And with the trim, I've done some great videos. There's a, a venison meatballs with sour cream, which is just absolutely stunning. Also, you know, we have cottage pie, shepherd's pie. So I did a stalker's pie, which is my take on either a shepherd's or a cottage pie, but with ground venison. And that is just a great dish, especially if you've been out shooting, hunting, come back, get that down your Gregory Peck. It is absolutely fantastic. So, if you have liked what you've seen here today, guys, please like it and share it. Share this video on all your forums, you shooting and hunting guys. Let's spread the word. Also, please subscribe to the channel by clicking down there, the subscribe button. Also, find me on Facebook at Scott Ree and the Scott Ree Project. Also on Twitter at the Scott Ree Project. Most of all, guys, like it and share it. Let's spread the word about this fantastic, healthy food. So until next time then, I'm left to pack all this stuff up. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Take care. See you again.